Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. VR training platforms like the one developed by Fundamental VR and Orbis International are helping surgeons train over and over before operating on real patients. As you practice each skill, the muscle memory starts to develop. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Well, hello, welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all the crap we love to talk about on oh, Yo Bros. My name is Ronnie. You're fr- I'm your friend, Ronnie. And that's my friend, Ben, over there, who's also your friend. We're old friends, guys. Hi, Ben. Unfortunately, everyone, I hate to break it to you all. I'm everyone's enemy today. Yes. <laughs> I'm Ben. Hi. How- how's it going? <laughs> I'm welcome your to friend, your Ronnie. show, Ben. Welcome to your life, Ben Mandelker. <laughs> welcome to your life, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's a below deck podcast day. We're very excited to talk about that. Um, come see us in Europe, London, Birmingham, Dublin. Any of you out there? You coming? You coming? You coming? We're going to be there. So should you. We're going to be there in May. Get your tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. We're also going to be in L.A. for a small, intimate little gathering, a little show we're doing at the Kookaburra Lounge in Hollywood for the Netflix Is a Joke Comedy Festival, also available on uh, uh, watchwhatcrappens.com, as well as links to our Patreon, which is where you'll get this video, all our videos, and our bonus episodes. This week, we are going to do a trailer trash preview of the house of the dragon season two which is coming out soon and we will be recapping for wondery plus on our show called winter is crappening what do you think of that that was a mouthful i'm lisping more than usual today my tongue has enlarged in my mouth for some reason and my face looks like raw meat because i went to a severe microneedling session with a girl who is lovely but must have had a terrible morning because good god she stomped on me look at me what's it me was it the queen from House of the Dragon? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, she did a great job. Uh, and I'm going to look like a fucking baby next week. So good. enjoy this meat face, everybody. <laughs> ben, how are you doing today? I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm feeling very fulfilled. I've been like making healthy choices over the past 48 hours, which is so rare. I made lentils. I did yoga. I did Peloton. I'm feeling like I'm doing the right things in life. Which means that Hmm. probably the second half of this week will be a shit show. (laughs) Which means we're nearing wreck time, okay? (laughs) Which means like, oh, that's how you always know I'm about to go traveling again. Because um, just as I establish good habits and routines, I leave. And then it all goes to shit for then three months. So I like it. I like that you can think ahead. Yeah, so it's a little Um, exciting to my life right now. 
I'm the opposite. I'm like, we're going to be traveling to Europe. I'm going to eat all of the processed foods I can because I'm not going to be able to get corn <laughs> syrup for a while. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm already like. I just, I had to buy a new piece of luggage when I was in New York because my other piece of luggage broke. And so I was like, it, then I was like, okay, so how's this going to fit? And then it turns out that European airlines have different standards for overhead and carry on than American airlines. And so of course, American airlines allow for lots of big stuff, but European is like small and petite. So now I'm like, oh my God, like I'm already thinking about what am I going to pack and how am I going to make it last? And how's this going to work? And how's it going to fit in the bag? And should I do carry on? Should I maybe have a, should I have something that I, that I check after all, but what if it gets stolen? But why am I thinking about it getting stolen? Don't be such a nervous Nelly and yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I'm going down well, the path. Yeah, that's a spiral. It's going to be a month long spiral. Yeah. Coming to you next on Watch What Crap. Coming to you for the next month on Watch What Crappens. Exactly. Slowly spiraling day by day. What am, I gonna plug my, what am I going to plug my computer into? How yeah. do plugs work? Got to get your adapter. Make sure. Make sure you do that. Um, well, today, guess what, guys? Travel. Today, we have an adapter for those of you who need to bridge your citizenship from Housewives World into the Below Deck World. And that adapter is Jill Zarin. Jill Zarin. <laughs> <laughs> from Real Housewives of New York, possibly one of the most grating human beings to ever be born onto this beautiful planet of ours. Okay. I think no matter what part of the world you're in and no matter where we hope to travel you would probably find this woman extremely annoying and that brings that brings us all together guys yeah but you know um uh the episode ended and my reaction was basically like god i love jill zarin <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I just really enjoyed her on this episode. To me, it reminded me of, like, the first two seasons of Roni, when, with this overbearing Yenta, who I was like, I, everything about her should make me just irritated with her. But I just leave being like, I really enjoy her. I'm like, I don't disagree with anything she said. Is she totally overbearing? Is she totally excessive? Yes. But I was like, but she's not necessarily wrong. Was she wrong? Was she? Were any of her notes wrong? I'm not even saying wrong. I'm saying terrible. You know what I mean? She's just terrible. <laughs> so sorry. There's just she here's is, what she made but me I realize. It. She made me realize what a quiet area I live in. I remember when I first moved to the country, I couldn't sleep because my ears would ring because it was so quiet at night. I had to use white noise and stuff to go to sleep. And once I finished watching this episode, I started getting tinnitus again. <laughs> It's like, wow, it's really quiet without Jill Zarin talking. It's too quiet. Like, I can't handle it anymore. That's how much she gets in your fucking brain. <laughs> you know what we need? Why aren't there forks here? You know what we need? Something to wipe the spots off of the forks. I'm sorry I'm complaining, but you know what? It makes it better. That's why people have me around. She really was acting like she was on some show, like on the Travel Channel, if that even still exists, of like where you go onto a yacht and you fix it up. She was really thinking. It seemed like she thought she was the host of some other program. Um, it was definitely, it was too much. Uh, but the thing is this, is that other, other yacht charter guests that we've seen on all these shows come on and they complain about things and they're very con either condescending or they're passive aggressive or they're just like mean. And she's just like, no, let me just tell you, you should do this. You should fix this and it'll be better. That's all. <laughs> and I just, I kind of just appreciated her directness just sort of like, uh, yeah, you should do this. Put out some crudités. That's, you know, that's all I need. Some crudités. You know what? A good, a good yacht has toiletries over here. You know, <laughs> I was like, I liked it. I know I've been everywhere. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get out. Uh, let's get into it. So I did not notice this line last week, but when Zandy gets all pissed off at the end because Sunny is crying, thinking that Zandy is flirting with Ben, and she's going off about uh, about how annoying this girl is. <laughs> she goes, like, catch me outside. I'm done with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, catch me outside. It's nice I to love see it. I think Zandy saying that. Yeah, it was not what I would ever expect Zandy to say. <laughs> and she says it in such a low-key way in her zandy way catch me outside i'm done with this shit catch me outside i'm done with this shit yeah uh i love zandy she's great and i feel like she's so patient because she is like a first stew who's just like stuck in the third stew position basically and <laughs> she's just like 
constantly dealing with idiots. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to it. It's dramatic music, and Ben and Sonny have just had a little spat. And he's like, oh, I'm touchy with her, but it's not sexual at all. Let me look deeply into your eyes while I kiss you. <laughs> and then outside, Zandi is talking to Fraser, and she's like, why do I need to change myself to make a two-year-old kid feel better about herself? <laughs> because that's the thing with two-year-old kids. You have to be nice to them because they're babies. At least yeah. that's what everybody tells me. I will argue with a fucking two-year-old. I don't care. Oh, I, I don't care how old they are. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. Oh, I've argued with them. I'll listen. I will argue with an old person. I will argue with a baby. I will because those are two categories of people that I don't feel like will um, beat me in a fight. So <laughs> I got news for you. I famously I've been beat up by a two year old. <laughs> I famously got into a fight with uh, an elderly lady at the pool at LA Fitness once. And I, <laughs> but but if you put me with a lady who's maybe like you know from age. Uh, 18 to um, 67. <laughs> I'm not touching wow. them. Not touching. <laughs> wow. They elder can abuse. They can all be. I love me it. Up. I love that we're opening with elder abuse. <laughs> I have to go. Listen, it's like the laws of nature. You just, you got to go with what you can, what you can get. <laughs> you got to, you got to pounce on what you can, what you can kill. So meanwhile, Sunny is now doing that thing that really makes me crazy, where she is now in bed with Ben, apologizing to Ben after he was just all over Zandi to make her jealous. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with this girl? Okay. I can't stand that. Also, Ben, did you read this thing that Ben put out where he's like, oh, I'm super disappointed in Captain Carey for suggesting that, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to dock a boat. This could ruin my reputation in this industry. Like he's coming out, like trying to come against Captain Carey. You fucking moron. How do you think that looks in the industry? Yeah. Captain Carey has been nothing but nice to you and gave you an amazing fucking opportunity. And now you're shit talking him. And then Sun Sonny's under there telling people off in the comments. <laughs> oh, like, God. You what sound like an ugly shit. troll. You sound like an ugly troll to be mean to oh, Ben. Come on, Sonny. Like, oh, God. Sonny, you're a goddamn mess, okay? Ben, that Get is so together. ridiculous, especially because Captain Carey could have hired another bosun and demoted Ben back down into deckhand. And he didn't. He actually has let, let him like maintain that opportunity. And so he's going to say, like, oh, Captain Carey made it seem like I'm not like qualified. That kind of like no one's listening during those scenes because they're all the same. It's always like if we don't get this boat right into the slip, not only will it sink, but it's attached to the docks and it could cause all the other boats to sink as well. We've got to get this. You know, it's fine. It's fine. We docked. We docked. Yeah, he no hasn't said anything. He said, I don't know if he's ready or something like that. He doesn't know if you're ready. He's just trying you out. That's the whole point, you ass. And then he's worried about how he's going to look in the industry. How do you think it looks? And you're coming out with this the week that you're fucking your subordinate on TV. Like, yeah, and you're concerned about how you <laughs> your professionalism. You don't like your professionalism questioned. <clears throat> if you were professional, you would say, listen, oh, I didn't mean to flirt with her or hurt your feelings, but I'm your boss now, and I should probably not be fucking you on national this television at the same time. How about that? This guy, talk about a fragile male ego. This is the guy who actively undermined Jared, who Jared was not great, but he actively undermined him too, and even undermined Sonny as well. And then now he is going to complain that he feels a little undermined. I mean, talk about someone who is really only concerned about himself. Yeah, he's gross. So she, anyway, Sonny's apologizing to him, going, It's not on you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's not on you. And he's like, You need to trust me, which, no, you don't. You are you an idiot? <laughs> Don't no. trust him. And so boss. they start making out. And I just wrote you because that's how I feel. Gross. It's a big ew. I'm grossed out. It's a big ew. So uh, then Zandi is like, mic drop for some reason. <laughs> because she's <laughs> just told off Sunny in her mind. She's yeah. like, I'm not taking care of two year old. Mic drop. <laughs> Catch me outside, mic Remember drop. Remember when I said that? Catch me outside? Mic drop. So. Um, <laughs> So then Kyle comes up uh, behind Barbie in her cabin because they're sort of flirting and everything. And she's like, um, I'm actually going to bed, actually. So, like, don't touch me. Oh, actually, that feels great. Because he, then he starts to massage her. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, their yeah. low their low flame, their low, low wattage romance continues. 
They're simmering, if you will. Simmering. And so Zandy goes to bed, and she's like, 30 years old, and I'm involved in child's play. And then Kyle <laughs> uh, wakes up Barbie in the middle of the night with his snoring, and she's like, okay, then get the fuck out now. You can get the fuck out now. Okay, <laughs> just shut the fuck up. I heard you snoring right now. Go. Just go. Go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's like, Barbie and I have formed a relationship of that, I'm sure. But is it a friendship? Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle voice. <laughs> I feel like a tingle of joy inside when I hear it. Well, it's basically so, me doing this guy, Anton, who's on Love Island and he was Scottish. So I'm just doing Anton's voice. I'm like, well, they're both Scottish, so they sound exactly the same, right? <laughs> so I'm so upset we're not going to Scotland on our tour. Hey, we've got time. We can go back. Well, we could just go there. We could just go. We? I mean, I don't really understand geography or where anything is, which is why I've made zero plans, <laughs> zero we travel plans. We could theoretically just go up there after Birmingham. Like nothing yeah. is locked in with, a, with, a, with any of our... We can do whatever we, we want. We can do Anywhere it. with we the internet, anything. We can go everywhere, everywhere in Europe, guys. Yeah, we can do everything everywhere all at once. As long as there's some laundry, by the way. I'm going to need a washing machine at some point. As in, like, I'm taking Tide Florida. Pods and I'm counting on sink water. I'm just going to wear the same thing every day so I don't have to carry anything around. Okay, so it's 7 a.m. and it's 31 hours before charter. And Barbie's like, oh my God, are you still here? I'm not a morning person. Don't even fuck with me, Kyle. He's like, I was just saying good morning. She's like, die, Kyle. Just fucking die. I told you don't talk to me. I'm going. I'm going. I'm literally going. Pretty good, Dean. See you in 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh now we see okay so dylan the new guy we in case anyone didn't listen to our vanderpump rules recap or whatever for some reason that is still yet to be explained dylan showed up on vanderpump rules last week like a day after he made his debut on uh below deck and still Can I very ask why everybody is so shocked and thrilled that this happened, that somebody from Below Deck showed up as a background character. Why is that so weird to people? I mean, it's like a lot of emails about, I don't, I just don't get why it's so weird. I mean, they met probably at BravoCon or something and then they hung out for a drink or something. Because, I mean, wh wh because what does Deckies, it mean? Because Deckies in America linger in Fort Lauderdale. They they hang out there, they, they become friends or whatever. It's just weird that there would be a decky that makes their way to Vanderpump Rules, you know. And most you know, people that hang on to Vanderpump Rules people tend to just be in West Hollywood trying to make it as something, you know. No, you know why? This is why I'm not surprised. Then I see what you're saying. I totally understand what you're saying uh, because what, nights that I've been to Pump, I've met below deck guys there. They all hang out with those. All the tall well, ones Alex, hang out together. Alex from season one, I think, works in Marina Del Rey. I think he even was like friends with Kristen. He may have even shown up on on Vanderpump Rules at one point. Yeah, they're around more than you think, everybody. But anyway, <laughs> Dylan's there probably because he's like, um, I work out, I work out, so I'll be there. I'll be there. I, I used to be the fat kid, but I'm not anymore. Now I'm thinner than everybody. I can't wait to be in West Hollywood. It's gonna be amazing. It's great. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing at the at at your ominous warning. They're around a lot more than you'd think. They're <laughs> below deck men. everywhere. Like, below deck people are everywhere. This is going to be like an article on Collider that's going to show up on Facebook. <laughs> below deck men are, are below deck men are around more than you may think. Here's what to look out for. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. When I saw them at Pump, it was below deck people, Vanderpump Rules people, obviously. And The Bachelor, a couple of The Bachelor guys. Oh, I was well, like, oh my guys, God, yeah. what a what a STD Latin crew. Like that's, I know. That, is a, that is a crew to have some hand wipes around. <laughs> yeah, could definitely use some uh, Jill Zarin on tips on how to keep that uh, area spiffier. <laughs> the tip, specifically. Tips on the tip. Tips on the so tip. Zandi is talking to the captain because they like love each other in the mess hall. They love having conversations in the mess hall. Yeah. And so he's like, just checking in on you. And she's like, I'm good today. You know, I'm in a good mood because I don't know why. I think it's because before I went to bed, I was feeling stressed. And then I dropped the mic. <laughs> catch me outside. Catch me, catch me outside. He's like, all right. Well, as I like to say, Vinny de Sorida Yakala. <laughs> that's, that's what we say in Turkish. Is that catch me outside in Turkish? 
<laughs> sure is. I think it is. <laughs> or maybe I just ordered a bagel. Either way, I'll accept it. <laughs> Uh, so he helps her unpack stuff, I guess, and they're stalking the kitchen. And then Barbie and Sunny are talking, and Sunny's like, oh my god, I need to get a fucking grip, huh? And she goes, you seriously do? You seriously do? You think people are chasing Ben? <laughs> ben, seriously. <laughs> and then Sunny gives us one of these annoying monologues where she says, when I have a couple of drinks and Alter Ego comes out, her name is Sabrina. She's a jealous bitch. The guys I used to date were like little assholes that would cheat on me. And Sabrina's like my little protective shield. But get her out of here. Tequila Sabrina. No, no. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, she's not your Alter Ego. She's you. Okay. Just so you know, that's just you. And second of all, she's not your protective shield. What should be your protective shield would be higher standards or therapy. <laughs> Yeah, I would say it's not your alter ego, it's your ego, <laughs> and your protection needs to be condoms, because mm. you do not need to be Xeroxing Ben for this world, okay? It is. <laughs> and also, speaking of Vanderpump Rules hangers on, Tequila Sabrina, no. That's we have one Tequila Katie, ma'am. That's all we need. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like the way, just when people do this, like, I have this alter ego, like, I've got beers above that. <laughs> Uh, in Zim, when people do that, it's just their way of actually abdicating any sort of responsibility for their actions because it's like a funny thing, but it's like I just become a different person, and that's and it's like I can't control like whatever I do, I'm not responsible for it because that was Sabrina and that's not Sunny. It's like, mm, yeah, no, it was you, it was you, no, but that, that's I mean that's a legit thing. That's why you should murder people drunk. And I always tell my nieces, you know, here's some advice. Don't murder people sober. You have no excuse. I mean, when you're drunk, you can be like, oh my God, I became Sabrina. Sabrina's been through a lot of shit, you guys. You want me to tell you what Sabrina's been through? And then you can unload all the shit you've seen on Lifetime movies on Sabrina and get off probably, or like, at least get a suspended sentence or like a lighter sentence. But kill people sober, you're fucked. Sabrina, the low self-esteem witch. That's what you <laughs> call her. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. At Amica Insurance, we know it's more than just a car or a house. It's the four wheels that get you where you're going and the four walls that welcome you home. When you combine auto and home insurance with Amica, we'll help protect it all. And the more you cover, the more you can save. Amica. Empathy is our best policy. I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting, but Skims has changed that. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally tried their bras, and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are too. I've tried so many bras in the past, and the main issue that I have is that they weren't supportive enough, to the point where they felt slouchy. I love my Skims wireless form bra because it's so comfortable and supportive. The older I get, the more I care about actually being comfortable in what I wear every day. And with my wireless form bra, I no longer have to sacrifice my comfort for the support I need. Shop Skims bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes, 30A to 46H. Plus, get free shipping on all orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. Uh, so uh, now we're in the mess and Barbie's like, hey, Dylan, how are you? He's like, amazing. I'm amazing. How are you? High five. I'm amazing. High five. High five. <laughs> high five. Let's give high fives. And she goes, I'm not really that fucking amazing. I'm hungover. So then Fraser is in bed and he's like, I am so hungover. Look at me. I'm a hideous, disgusting, awful, fat mess. And I'm hungover. Awful. So then Sunny goes up to Zandy and Sunny's like, oh, I just want to apologize. And Zandy's like, it's okay. It's okay. I just, I was irritated. And, and she's like, I know, but there's no reason to be. I mean... Does anyone actually ever want to fuck that strange green bean of a man? Like, and Ben is do. eating watching them. <laughs> He's like watching them uh, try and get over the drama that he helped cause on purpose. I was yeah. just like sitting there watching it like it's a, like it's a TV show, you know, which it is. Um, and Sonny's like, but I'm sorry, though. And she goes, you're good. You can catch me inside. 
Okay. She's like, oh my God, thank you so much. She actually caught me while I was outside. So we're all good. <laughs> we're fine now. <laughs> so then Ben's giving instructions to the deckies about things, you know, wipe this, pull the anchor here. And then Fraser is just like hoping that he has a stew that comes in because, but they haven't heard anything about any new stews. And then Captain Carey is talking to um, Norma Dundee and he's like, oh, I need a new stew. Could you please send over some resumes? Thanks, mate. All right, I'll get right on that. I've got a gal named Sheila and a Sheila named Sheila and then another <laughs> Sheila named Gal. <laughs> Who'd you like to see first? <laughs> All right, we got a new stew. Her name is Nicole Kidman. She really takes any role these days. Will you accept her? She's like, we come to the yacht for the experiences. <laughs> uh, so now Sonny and Kyle have small talk. She asks where he's from. He's from Edinburgh. And he's like, me and my mom bought an Airbnb north of Scotland. I have a room upstairs. I haven't seen my mom in, in a donkey's ass. <laughs> say that literally. Every every day I'd wake up, I'd go and see the don donkey and be like, is my mom in there? Never in That's there. We used to have a donkey, actually. And if you looked at its ass close enough, you could see my mom. So, <laughs> Missed that donkey. My mom raised me until I was on, on my own until I was five. And then my stepdad popped up. And then my biological dad popped up on Facebook when I was 15, right? And I spoke to him for maybe a day. And then I realized, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not up to you to jump into my life whenever you feel like it. So I told him to fuck off. Huh? And my dad, my stepdad isn't dad. He adopted me. <laughs> and, uh, fuck, you know, Facebook, man. All these, I feel like so many guys from Below Deck are going to be using Facebook in 10 years to be like, hey, hey, it's me. <laughs> How's Alaska going? Just wanted to check in on you. <laughs> I've been trying to call you for 10 years, but really haven't had service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grace is not the working. best on boats. So <laughs> hope you're doing great. Maybe we can catch some coffee sometime. What if this is one of those strange multiverse time traveling things and Jared is actually Kyle's father? And he's traveled back in time. <laughs> Kyle's like, we bought a room. We bought an Airbnb with a portal to Alaska where I've been raised. <laughs> oh, it's all sorts of funkiness. So it's like Jared went back in time, but Kyle also had a portal across the world. <laughs> I go back there once a year just to see if the cricket rings. I was a big fan of watching the movie The Bear growing up. So I sometimes go to Alaska through my portal just to see if there are any bears that want to chase me around. So he has this like deep story and then Sonny's like, I'm from Canada and I went to boarding school. He's like, oh, fascinating stuff. Your mother, do you ever see her in the ass of an animal? She's like, mm. <laughs> She's like actually in a moose. In, in Canada, it would be a moose. And I actually have. It's weird. So Fraser is talking to the captain about the stew. He's like, are we getting a new stew? And he's like, it's a busy season. It's out of my control. How's this chef doing? He's like, oh, I think he's just putting too much on his plate. No pun intended. <laughs> There's a shit show in there. Filthy, filthy, floor to ceiling filth. Everywhere I go, I just can't handle it. I'm doing so much. I'm doing so much delegating. I simply do not have anyone else to delegate to. <laughs> well, you know, chefs, chefs are artists, and they can be quite sensitive. I had a friend of mine who came and worked for me. She was a mess over the whole of, over a mole being in the house. Okay, but I, I don't know what that means. That's what, <laughs> what I heard too. That? I I went back like five times. Like, what was in her house? She's a mess over the mole, <laughs> was it a mole being in the house. Was it a mole? Yeah, there was a mole in the house. Maybe that's an Australian saying. Like, oh, it's like if you're in over your head, you say, oh, she's got a mole in the house. She has got a mole, mole in the house. I'm going to look what it says. It's unusual to find a mole in the house, but it does happen. Moles create complex tunnels underground. Okay. But is the thing it the is this, they're on a boat. There's hmm. a mole on the yacht. Dear Eliza, dear Eliza, there's a mole on the yacht. Dear Eliza, a mole. <laughs> <laughs> These are all about espionage, everything I'm reading, because, uh, you know, the mole. Okay, or Gretchen Mole, who, you Gretchen know, was Mole. always like, oh, my God, this is the up-and-coming actress of always. our time. And then it's like, I mean, great job on Boardwalk Empire 10 years later. <laughs> what? Why, why haven't we given Gretchen a chance? I love Gretchen Mole. Well, that Mole. was the issue that my chef had. She was, very, she was in a mess over the fact that Gretchen Mole never became a thing. And I didn't see what if the big deal was. If she had to make one more quesadilla for the Gretchen Mole that never showed up to Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see what the big deal was. Starlets come, starlets go. I mean, whatever happened to, you know, 
Maria Conchita Alonso, you know what I'm saying? So I don't oh, well, give a how fuck. dare you? How dare you ask? <laughs> I fucking love the Maria How about Conchita. Valeria Galeno? All right, that's a better question. <laughs> I'm not offended by that Claire one. Claire Duvall. But here's the big, here's the deal. My chef friend was very upset about Gretchen Ball still being in a house. <laughs> and I didn't see what the big deal was. I didn't give a fuck, actually. And guess what came from that? I ruined a friendship. I can't even get a text back from Gretchen herself. <laughs> And it's because of the pressure that I put on her. Now, Anthony is a great chef, and I don't want to ruin him. Mostly because he looks like the guy from Traders, and he was great on The Good Wife. So I don't want to mess that relationship up, too. Listen, Gretchen Moore may not call me back, but the MC from Cabaret, goddamn will. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Sometimes when I look at Anthony, our chef, I wonder... Was he ever left in the middle of an automatic door at the supermarket as a child? Feels like those doors closed on his face a few times. Am I right? <laughs> the hell? What did Anthony do? He has a lot on his plate. That's what he <laughs> Just did. Just right into straight up Anthony abuse. He has a lot on his plate. Servings are too big. Too much food. They're too heavy. Stews can't lift it up the stairs. There's a mole. Gretchen Mole has a, has, has a petite woman. She eats small things. Can't have too much on the plate. Right. I'm going to end this segment now, all right? This segment <laughs> is now over, right? Call, call Norman Dundee. Like like Gretchen Moore's career, this segment's over. <laughs> God bless her. R.I.P. Gretchen. <laughs> all right. So the chef is now in the middle. Uh, now he's in the kitchen, and he's like, it is the middle of the season. Now I'm tired. But revenge is my biggest motivator. And then we see a clip of him getting nagged over stuff. Like, no fish. Your kitchen is filthy. What have happened to Gretchen Mole? Gretchen Mole? Gretchen Mole? Since <laughs> I was working kid, on a screenplay, of- <laughs> it's like this will be this will be a vehicle for Gretchen Mole. <laughs> <clears throat> Since I was a kid, a bunch of motherfucker make laughing at you because you don't know how to read. It hurt me inside. It's part of dyslexia. It makes this job more difficult. And what's a shame about it is every time I write it down, no one can understand what the hell I'm trying to say in my art. So I had to cook. And this is what you really have to love what you do. I cannot give up. I cannot give up. I just cooked that salmon backwards. Damn it! <laughs> And then we just see him uh, washing out a trash can. Lou, that revenge. That revenge is coming in strong. They're such assholes on this show, the editors. You have to love what you do. Do not give up. Spraying down the inside of a trash can. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. I want to... Everyone, I uh, need uh, Ben and Fraser and Anthony. We're going to have a preference sheet meeting, or as I like to call it, Gretchen Mole... It's preferred not to be in Hollywood at this moment. <laughs> Hollywood has a preference sheet meeting and Gretchen Mole's not on it. That's what I meant to say. Gretchen Mole, Gretchen Mole is on the cannot haves. All right, she's right next to gluten. She's in between gluten and dairy. What's All the right. opposite of a primary guess? That's Gretchen Mole. <laughs> <laughs> she ruined my friendship with my chef friend, so I'll always have a bitterness towards her. Mm. All right, now everyone worked extra hard on that last that last charter. I'm extra impressed. Now, Melinda Springer, she was a former cruise director, and Fraser's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "Well, her husband is Noah. And then uh, we've got Gary, who's a fashion executive, and his girlfriend Jill Zarin, one of the original housewives of New York." And Ben goes, she looks like a housewife. Well, congratulations. Get get ready for... You think that... Based on the girls that you're into, you think that... How, <laughs> I'm, I'm flummoxed. <laughs> you're you gonna, don't even know how to I react was, to Ben. Well, I'm like... I'm, like, how's a, how's a, how's a, I'm turning to Shannon Dork. You don't, you, don't, you, don't even, you don't even know. You think that Camille... You think that Camille and Sonny are going to keep looking like this for the next 40 years of their life? <laughs> <laughs> And Fraser's like, I know who she is, but he says it in a way like he doesn't know who he is, and it disappoints me. And Fraser, I think Fraser <laughs> needs more gay education. Who who's, who does that? People you think it's who just talk youth? about Gretchen Mole. I know who she is. You don't know who she is. You don't know who she, she is. She was on Night Court. You know? no. That's like what I say about Olivia Rodrigo. Like yeah. when I first heard an Olivia Rodrigo song, I was like, I know who she is, and I was like, I don't know who she is, and then I googled her, 
And then it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that I was like, oh my God, she's amazing. Because she came up on my feed and I was like, hey, lady in the computer box, who is this? And she's like, Olivia Rodrigo. And I was like, no one ever told me I would fall in love with fucking Olivia Rodrigo like I have. Mm. And now I just play her on nonstop loop. She's so edgy, Olivia Rodrigo. She has she so many is. things to say. She's like she angry. She's gonna speak Don't say up. Don't smarcastically. She's she gonna does. speak up. <laughs> Love her. Okay, so um, Jill Zarin's coming. No one knows who she is, which is hilarious. And then they want to play pickleball because all these guests met playing pickleball in the States. And Fraser's like, may I ask, what is pickleball? And Carrie's like, well, it's tennis for rich people. So Gretchen Moll doesn't play it. High five, anyone? No? Um, it's by the not way, tennis for rich people, it's and not. I love that this country has not been affected. This is like watching a zombie movie where they're like, oh, it's just affecting America. And they all think that they're safe until that one fucking zombie floats yep. over on a leaf, and then boom, they're all dead, but, you know? By the way, you know what's tennis for rich people? Tennis. Tennis. Yeah, tennis is... <laughs> <laughs> well, you think... Hey, you're, you're seeing you're seeing Sal Molinari uh, from the bodega go into Wimbledon? Yeah, Sorry, this is uh, tennis is for rich people. Pickleball is tennis for lazy people. <laughs> it's for people with it's bad for Tom knees. Schwartz. It's for Tom Schwartz. Yeah, it's and for the Rams of the, the world. Board. Yeah. Um. So uh, Melinda is allergic to everything, everything. But by she, the way, I just heard all. The, I just felt all the pickleball people get upset. And guess what? I'm not afraid no. of you because I know you're not going to chase me with your lazy asses. Okay, Ben, go ahead. Continue. I'm literally I'm not starting even a war with the pickleballers. The pickleball, pickleballers. Okay, I'm a team tennis. <laughs> so um, Melinda, the primary, is, is allergic to everything, and she's a vegetarian who is now integrating fish, uh, but she doesn't want raw seafood. Um, which is like funny because it feels like this person is very health minded and yet raw seafood, I feel like is the healthiest of the seafood in my mind. I mean, if you really think that mercury is a building block that we all it need. is, <laughs> it is just ask Jeremy Piven. Um, Noah doesn't like meat or fish and Josh doesn't like vegetables. You know, how do we even still have chefs in the world? I would just fucking quit. I would just serve matza. Just be like, everyone, here's some matza. You get it for the next three days, and that's it. <laughs> hey, everybody, here's your bowl of yeast with some raw tuna on the inside. Fucking, in, fucking die, okay? Just I just want to watch you all fucking die. Honestly, you could probably just make pasta the whole time. Just pasta, pasta, pasta. So, oh, but then there's also someone who's gluten-free and dairy-free and egg-free and yada, yada, yada. But they also want a pina colada-inspired birthday cake. Um, and But they also want a traditional birthday cake. Because the pina colada one, I think, has to be gluten-free and egg-free and fun-free. But and dairy-free. And dairy-free. Just free. don't eat a cake. How just about have that? Have a pina colada. Have an apple. Have a like, pina have colada. Have a fucking apple. Don't have make a... somebody do that for you. That's just fucking ridiculous. And I know people have allergies and this and that. No one has all of this. This is a bunch of bullshit. This is some first world privileged bullshit. And if you really do have all of these things, then have the decency to be embarrassed and bring an apple. That's what I say. <laughs> bring an apple. <laughs> I say just have a freaking pina colada at that point. But that has dairy, unfortunately. Well, then... It? I mean, probably, but I don't know. Pina colada inspired cake. I don't know. I think it's just, it's too much. So, uh, of course, Anthony's stressed and he's like, every person is different. Maybe it's not real. Oh, fuck. It's real. It's real. Oh, no. Oh, no. So they want to have a pickle. They also want to have like a beachside pickleball experience, which is weird to me because don't you have to bounce the ball? You can't bounce it on beach, right? Yeah, I don't know how, how I don't know what, I what ever these people it. are playing. Yeah. And they want to do a sunset yoga flow. But also, you Fine. know, they're trying to get rid of pickleball in communities. Have you read this? <laughs> like a lot of communities are fighting back because all these home house community, community neighborhoods or whatever are putting pickleball courts in there and it's making the na neighbors crazy because it sounds like, like yeah. it's a, it's a, it's not, that sounds more like tennis. It's a horrible, horrible sound. It's like a, 
over and over and it's making people fucking crazy. So of course these people want to go to someone else's beach where everybody else is trying to relax and make the most obnoxious sport sound of all time. Just choke on your fucking pina colada cake. I can't with these people. I already hate these people. I don't even know who they are. So then they want, their friend is going to be teaching them the sunset flow. How's a person with sunset flow hanging out with these difficult people? It's not working. Your um, yoga is not working. I'm telling you that. Listen, we this is clearly a case where casting cobbled this charter together. Like there's these people are not all friends. Like you cannot tell me that Jill Zarin is friends with these people. <laughs> it does not make any sense. Yeah. We met we met playing pickleball. All right, so now it's <laughs> bedtime and then they go to bed and then it's the morning and we get majestic music. <laughs> and it's because Dylan is working out in slow mo. Mm -hmm. Dylan poor Dylan. His insecurity is delicious to me. I love it. His insecurity is wild. We're, uh, we'll get to it in a moment, but I knew there's a scene that's going to come up. I was like, oh, I bet Ronnie just let out a belly laugh at that scene. <laughs> so I'm literally, I'm literally dying watching this guy. I think he's the best comedy on TV. <laughs> he's what Los Angeles does to people. And I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not saying he's from LA or he's to LA or whatever. Just in case people are ever wondering what that experience is, if you're not someone who works out or, or is known for a good body or good looks or whatever, and you go to LA to be in that industry, this is what you become, this kind of yeah. person. He's just like completely crazy and he's completely mentally fucked for the rest of his life. And it's, you know, it's a study. It's a study, guys. Study yeah. up. We saw this last season with that guy, Tony, who also was like, oh, but I have to wake up at four in the morning so I have to work out. If I don't work out, I'd sad. And he was like so whiny about it. But like Dylan somehow is even more extreme than Tony is. So, um, and then he's like, oh, I love the feeling of getting a pump. Like, that feeling is the best feeling. Like, and you get to feel so confident in yourself. High five to myself. Ha ha. It's just like truly annoying. I love me. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he kind of messes up a weight as he's bragging, which was funny. Yeah. And um, then the chef is talking to himself. And he's like, I do not know what to make. I do not know. Because how can he? You know, he's completely fucked. Yeah. So then uh, we see him slowly start to unravel as he's thinking over the list. And then we go to the, me uh, the mess and as Dylan comes in. He's like, the protein, it's almost done. I'm scared. I'm scared. Where's the protein? <laughs> and so he's like, there's protein bars there. So he reads the back and he's like, three grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein. This is honest. This is honest protein. <laughs> High five protein. High five. Oh, geez. So then we go to everyone's cleaning, and then now, like, Captain Carrie is like, Ben, Ben, Kerry, let's do a walk around, okay? Well, there's nothing left on the counter, like last time, and this part was all shitty, but it's better now. Good job. All right. There's dust. There's a mark. Okay. There's a footprint. All right. Pretty good. And then we start, start getting the Captain Dad jokes. Uh, he's like, all right, let's get that in the Christopher. The Christopher walking. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong and then dylan's like oh i love stairs i want cabs because they're doing provisions so he's like he's, he's like the only one who's actually happy to be carrying lugging in provisions it's like i'm t i've said it a million times i cannot stand when they show provisions because i imagine myself being there having to bring in the provisions and you know it's hot and you're carrying boxes and it's just like endless and endless and you're so not into it and then you walk by someone and they're like just a few more i'm like i don't want your optimism right now this is what i hate doing i know i don't want people's optimism either in general i just think it's so gross it's such a gross lifestyle i mean you guys do you i'm not gonna pass i'm not gonna try and pass laws to legislate against it but it's gross so captain and fraser uh captain's like so you checked everything not the sink and there's paper in the trash can already what's up with that bro well, you're looking in very fine detail today, Captain. I don't know if I need that. And he's like, oh, more detail every time, mate. This was broken last trip. That's not fixed yet. Make this toilet paper better. Do better, Fraser. He's like, <laughs> I'm definitely feeling a stew down. It's not the level I like to work at. <laughs> but that's also because I'm a hideous, hideous, disgusting human being. So then. <laughs> Where does Fraser's insecurity come? I forget. I don't know. I forget. He will, he just like will mutter things to like to him. Well, he, he will, he just mutters really like withering things about anyone. And if he doesn't have anyone to wither about, he just withers about himself. Like he will often be like, I'm disgusting. Commercials. Here comes one right now. 
So the captain, uh, he's like, all right, everyone, it's game time. Guest arrival in 15. Gretchen Moore's stardom arrival. Never. <laughs> so now the song is, get out of my way and stay out of my way and get out of my way. And slow-mo, the guests start coming up the dock. And we hear, <laughs> are we ready to have a good time? Yeah, we are. Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> Can't wait to make that sound on a private beach, am I right? <laughs> Hi. So it's this group of like young people and then like Jill and her, and her boyfriend, Gary. And uh, like, hello, welcome. Welcome. Here's your chief, Steve Fraser. He's going to take you on a boat tour. And I'm sure that uh, none of you will have anything to comment about. So enjoy. Oh, my God. Is it big go. Jill has a comment literally about every single thing. Oh, uh, this boat is spotless. Good job. Oh, God, this is this is the hot tub. I love a hot tub. Let me put my finger in this hot tub. Ow, ow, ow. This hot tub is so hot. Can you turn it down for now? What if we come out <laughs> to the hot tub and we happen to burn ourselves? I don't like that. What is this window? Look down into the bedroom. I'm not going to have that. I don't like people looking at the bottom of my, my feet. Could you put that on the sheet? I don't think I remembered to put that on the feet. Can someone write that down on the sheet that I don't like my feet? Okay. Feet you know, it's very dangerous to have this window that goes right into the window because you get the UV rays. And if you're lying in bed, you're not going to remember to put on your suntan lotion. So is there any way to put a top over this? Because otherwise it's very dangerous. I'm just giving you some notes because I just want this to be the best yacht for you guys, you know, going forward. <laughs> and Fraser's like, and this is your entrance into the primary. And here's everything you really need, the bar. <laughs> right. That was a joke. You can all laugh now. Now, we all understand there are quite a few dietary restrictions. Oh, it's not me, Fraser. Don't worry, no one's going to go into anaphylactic shock or anything, okay? The worst that's going to happen is they'll blow up and float away because of the gluten, <laughs> which could be hilarious, you know? Which reminds me, do we have any strings that we can kind of tie these people to <laughs> chairs with? Just in case they start to go, we'll hear the chair clinging on a, on a bar or something on the way out. You know, I don't know, like where I live that we have a Thanksgiving Day parade. So I'm very used to this, things inflating and floating down the street, okay? So I'm just giving you some of my experiences and want to pass it on to you so that way you know what to do. <laughs> um, I love the way she said anaphylactic shock. There's something about Jill Zarin when she says words with lots of syllables in them. They, they just are like so amusing to me. I just remember there was one episode of Roni early on where she went to a protest at the UN uh, and it was about Iran. And there was the the leader of Iran at that time was somebody, I forget his name. It was like, uh, like Ahmed Azad or something like that, or Ahmed Azad. And I just remember her saying, Akhmedjan, Akhmedjan. Akhmahanajad? I remember, but I forget. But I remember and hearing, I forget at the same yeah, time. Yeah, he was like, he was a he was a thing. He had the beard and everything, and like he was always in the headlines. And just hearing Jill Zarin saying his name always amused me. She's like, oh, this is Akhmahanajad. <laughs> I don't know, her with syllables, it's just like a thing. I can't describe it. I love when she does lots of syllables. So when she said, well, then no one's going to go into anaphylactic shock. I was like, yes! It's a Jill Zarin big syllable It's word. like they're playing her greatest hits for you. You're just <laughs> in ecstasy in the front row. You're like, yes, a multi-syllable word. Yes, Jill. Syllables. Just... You're wearing a Jill Zarin shirt. <laughs> I am really standing for her today. <laughs> Can't explain. So it. the captain's uh, letting Sunny call departure. And then we get some Sunny background. Oh, oh well, first Melanie's like, oh, look at all this food you guys have out on the bar. That's cool. Um, So which are the gluten-free things? The nuts, Melanie. The fucking nuts, okay? <laughs> so, um, Sonny, so, so, Captain Carey's gonna have Sonny, like, have a bigger role than usual for leaving the, the dock. So, this is what launches her into her backstory, which is, my parents grew me up very comfortably, and, like, I, you know, I lived outside Montreal, and we had a boat, and water's definitely my safe space, um, you know, even though I could die in it but it reminds me of literally home. the unsafest safe space i've ever heard of you know what my safe space is beds of knives i'd love to just <laughs> you know what my safe space is bare wire <laughs> <laughs> after i've washed my hands yeah. <laughs> open charges okay sorry ben go ahead <laughs> so she says in university i didn't know what to do with my life so i really tried to figure out myself in those years and that really damaged my self-esteem but yachting was that door that like opened up to myself and my confidence has skyrocketed um you crawled into bed and apologized to ben when he was the one who messed up so let's rethink that your confidence needs some work okay <laughs> uh so she does great 
you know, and um, Dylan says, Dylan is saying things like, oh, you want me to get the ropes? Sounds Gucci. Sounds Gucci. High fives. Oh, my God. It's this fucking guy. Can't. So then um, Dylan is now kind of mansplaining a rope technique to Sonny. He's like, this is called a cap stand. People call it a winch. A winch is on the side and cap stand isn't on the side. Do you understand? High five. High five. Give me a high five right now. Right now. Right now. Do you need a hand with that? Do you need a hand with that? Should we hug it or high five it? What do you want to do with that rope? If you could take that rope to lunch or high five it, what would you do to it? How many calories are this rope? Just wondering. So let's she... taste it, Sally. <laughs> oh, why did you let me taste that rope? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the good news is the rope is high protein and high in fiber. But I think it's a lot of calories. <laughs> so she's like, no, no, no. Like, no, it's fine. Like, I'm a, I'm a girl on deck and I got to prove myself. You know, it's like, no, you don't. You ain't got to prove shit, girl. High five. High five. Come on. I need to burn but three calories. Come on. High five me. <laughs> Did you know that high fiving burns calories? Yes or no? <laughs> so then um, Jill is like, oh, my God, let me tell you something. This ice machine, not great. It's not the best. Okay. Take this ice. Dump it out. I need different ice. I need I need Jill Zarin and Heather Dubro to have a an like a, a an awful off. Like I I need them to both be on this boat and they can both complain about like ice cube sizes because because Heather Dubro also has an issue with like ice. Doesn't she have like very specific tastes about ice ice shapes? Right. Yeah. Remember when she got her gigantic ice machine? Doesn't it yes. make like huge bowl huge huge balls of ice like weapon weapon size ice? <laughs> yes. But Jill likes different. She likes smaller ice, so they wouldn't get just, along, which would I, even be better, you know, if they like different kinds of ice. So they were making everybody make them each their own kind of ice. I know. I, it's just we've talked about this, the Jill Zarin effect and how we both have we always have two different reactions because you are brought back to your days as like being a waiter in New York. Right. And you dealt with Jill Zarin's and it was like a monstrosity. And for me, it takes me back to being just like you know, a Jewish kid in Westchester. And like, this is just like, yeah, you heard people talk. This is just the way people communicate. And so when she says, you know, I have to tell you this ice machine, not the best ice machine. <laughs> it's just like comforting to me. It's just so funny. Cause they're so, I just feel like I, my mom doesn't talk like that, but I just feel like I was around just Jewish ladies. I don't know how, maybe it's at Hebrew school. Maybe it's just at family functions or whatever, but you're just around voices like this. And just that, the the way that, <laughs> it's not someone saying, oh God, this ice, this ice machine sucks. Uh, it's just, you know what? This ice machine, not the best ice machine. It's like these little micro Yelp reviews. And they just right, but the, the, you're right that I, I am triggered because of waiting tables because I'm Southern and I'm gay. And so I'm all, no matter how I talk here, my real personality is always trying to please people, right? So, and I'm, I'm fucking waiter. So I want to just get it right. And in the South, even if you fuck something up, if you just go, I'm sorry, people are like, no, you're great, honey. You do a good job. I mean, that's how people tell you you suck here. They literally say, bless your heart, you know? <laughs> so I'm used to like being validated even if it's not true <laughs> that's just how it is and in new york you never get that validation no. it's always it could be better how was your meal it could have been better you know <laughs> yeah. this was fine like the pizza was fine but the, you know the crust it wasn't as crunchy on the outside as it could have been it's been crunchier before but you know before i had it, it was crunchier on the outside but then the cheese was kind of raw you know what i mean like <laughs> i don't know so if you're putting these directly me. in the center of the oven can i see the oven is there a chef here <laughs> that i could talk to you know it was like constant and no matter what you did it was even if you knew they loved it they ate every last bite it was never good enough. And so that's what Jill brings yeah. me back to, you know? I know. And like, for me, I find it to be so amusing. Like, it's so amusing. I just, I don't know where, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's comforting. Because it's like, again, my mom and my aunts, you know, they never were, they're not like this. Like, I, they're not like, feh. Not the best ice machine. They're not like that at all. But I think I've just, you're just around and somehow like it has soaked into my life that when I hear like, you know, when I hear like a, a Jewish woman talking in this sort of way, which theoretically it's not a Jewish thing. It's a New York thing. Yeah. I was going to say, I've never, I don't want it. I don't want to make it sound like it's That's a Jewish it, thing. Cause people are going to be like, Ronnie's hating on Jews. I'm yeah, no, I, I actually and I really never should. looked at it like that. I just looked at it as like an older it's, New it's York regional. lady thing. You it's know? A or not thing. lady thing either. It's like an older New Yorker thing. It's yeah, just like Ramona would do it too. A city like, thing. 
Yeah, so I, I I'm gonna divorce it from saying like you know I just associate it with <laughs> yeah, like thank you. Jewish this women because time. of my life, but um yeah that's not I don't want to I don't want to like engender any like anti semitism. <laughs> Especially yeah, no, I'm no, Jewish. it's not that. It's uh, but it it's is just a regional a New York thing. thing you know? It's like a New York yeah. regional thing, Long Island, New York, and I don't know. It just cracks. But Jersey's not up. like that. I have to say, no, Jersey Jersey's people different. aren't like that because when they would come over the bridge or through the tunnel, whatever it was, they would never. They were like, "Ah, it's great. Everything's great. It's fucking great. It's fucking awesome. All right, <laughs> just get out of here. <laughs> just get out of here. <laughs> just get out of here. So we can keep talking. You know." Oh my god, you look so cute. Get over here. Sit on my laps, <laughs> is. All right. So, uh, Jill's uh, other part of her personality. So, she likes crazy eyes and she also likes Diet Cokes done a very specific way. So, she's got Barbie running up and down these stairs. So, Barbie goes to get her new ice and she's like, uh, Jill, do you like this ice more than that other ice? And she's like, um, yes. This is nugget ice. I approve of nugget ice. Okay, go tell everybody on board. Do you have the sheet? Do you have the sheet here? Will you write it on the sheet? All right, you know what? Follow me around with the sheet as I come up with things. We're gonna we're we're gonna just keep adding to that nugget ice. Okay, number one. And Barbie's like, yeah, Jill is the primary in her own head. And then we see Jill say, you know what? I don't care about anyone else. My diet cokes go in the freezer. I just and then she and then Jill is so proud. She goes out to the other guests and goes, guess what? I. <laughs> Guess, guess what? I, I don't know. This is so, this cracks me up. I don't know. She's like, guess what? I just taught them how to make a Diet Coke. I just taught them how to make a good Diet Coke. It has to, be, on cold, it has to be cold soda with nuggets. Okay. That's, that's it. Thank you, Julia Child. <laughs> she cracked the code. I don't know. She's so proud that, like, she figured out the best way to do that, do that diet coke, and she goes and advertises it to everyone. This very she's going to be one of those way. benches with names on it in Central Park. It's like <laughs> Jill, Jill Zarin taught the world how to make a good diet coke. She's going to get a she's going to get a medal of honor from the from the president. She's going to be at the yeah. Kennedy Center Honors. <laughs> like, taught the world how to make good diet coke. So on other parts of the boat, uh, Dylan is breaking down on the inside as he does push-ups off of things, <laughs> which, which I love. And then Fraser and Chef are talking dinner, and uh, the chef is like, okay, I'm going to do shrimp cocktail, whole lobsters. And Fraser's like, not a good idea. They don't like scallops. They don't like and lobster. They don't like lobster, actually. They Instead, they're going to oh. do scallops. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. And so um, he's like, oh, God, chef is overwhelmed. He's definitely losing focus. What's going on here? And the chef's like, I have tofu. I could do tofu. And he goes, okay. And then what's your old fashioned cocktail? Is it the crudite? Mm -hmm. And he's like, um, and then I'm going to do two cake as well. Welcome to paradise here. <laughs> it's going great. Chef, you do realize you're sauteing your sneaker right now. Oh, God. It is not shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lobster. <laughs> I'm feeding a rubber because it's not gluten. So <laughs> a water toy prep. So Jill's telling Fraser, so <laughs> how was your trip last week? Did you have a nice group? Oh, they were nice. That's good. That's good. You know, listen, out of all these people, all that I know is Noah and Melinda. But Melinda's father, let me tell you this, come closer. He invented the Moderna vaccine. I'm not fucking kidding with you. Huge. His father's huge. Okay, yeah. don't cough around him. I'm just yeah. warning you, don't cough around him, okay? He'll have you injected with with uh, with monkey blood <laughs> trying to find a cure for whatever you're passing around the boat, all right? I'm just warning you right now. God, she will literally gossip about anything to anyone. She's like, service worker, come over here. Let me tell you something. That person over there, her father invented the Moderna vaccine. And that one, that one's father, he's a lawyer. Yeah. Listen, Very Noah's father, person. everyone's kissing his ass. I wouldn't trust him, not because I don't trust vaccines. He doesn't like nugget ice. Okay. <laughs> Don't go near he him. Drinks, he drinks acicola. We're trying to, we're trying to change him. So um, now the chef is making a pina colada, colada cake with tofu. Sounds delicious. Fraser <laughs> yeah. is talking to Barbie about decor and she's freaking out because it's just, they still don't have a stew. And then Jill is like, so uh, captain, look at that. That's an island, right? I know what an island is. So what? which one is it? Because listen here, I've captained a boat myself, okay? It wasn't a boat like this. The fastest I ever went was, was uh, Newport. The farthest I ever went was Newport, but I wouldn't go to Nantucket because it's just too much openness there. Okay. Also, 
Uh, I heard from a very good friend that they do not have nugget ice on Nantucket. So why even go? Why even go? I have to <laughs> say, Gary, not the best island. This is why Gary marries a nag, because he needs one. Okay, so they're getting on water toys now, and Ben goes, all right there, Gary. Now, this is the pulley through the water thing. That's what it's called. It's the technical name for this toy. Now, be careful. Keep your dick out of that hole. And then Gary gets on it and goes, oh, okay. Oh, wait. I got my dick stuck in the hole. <laughs> Gary literally just cheated on Jill Zarin with the sea bob. <laughs> with the sea bob. <laughs> uh, all right, Captain. All right. All right. Ben, Ben, Ben to the wheelhouse. Uh, how's it going, Ben? He's like, well, it's been tough. I can't do everything. I'm going to have to put more responsibility on the crew. And I can't take it. And he's like, all right, well, put more responsibility on Dylan and see if he can handle it. All right. Like I saw him the other day, he was balancing a stack of protein bars on his nose like a seal. So I know he's got some skills in him. <laughs> uh, and then someone's asking Drew, uh, Dylan outside um, what his position is. He's like, I'm deckhand, but I think I'm going to be lead deckhand. Yeah, I have the same experience as Ben. So basically, I'm or, I'm already it, basically. I'm, I'm the captain. I, I could be. I will be. Will be the captain. Hold on. I'm just going to put my ankle behind my head. <laughs> oh, felt good. Felt good. Felt, felt we, better. High five. High five my own foot. Does this mean that we're setting up uh, a scene where Ben prom promotes Sonny over Dylan and then uh, Dylan is salty? Or is it going to be that Ben promote Dylan over Sonny and then Sonny Salty because Sonny is sleeping with Ben, but then the news too comes and Ben has eyes for the news too. What do you think is going to happen? What, which way is it going to go? I do not care enough about these people to, <laughs> All right. to make that. I will say it's not that he can't, ice, really give Sonny, he can't really give Sonny the raise because he's banging Sonny. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is I don't why know, I don't know, I saw that movie with um, that red-headed actress where she was the Julian conductor. Moore. Tall. Tall. Tar. Tar. You mean Fraser? I saw that movie, and you know you better be careful when you're banging the help, like who you promote, because mm. it can ruin your life. Okay, yeah. and also don't bang the help. Okay, how come it's so serious in that movie? But below, has Below Deck just not had Tar yet? Have they not shown that on y'all's <laughs> y'all's TVs yet? Okay, <laughs> you need to watch it. That's you know what, what I saw all, Tar. All the people on this show. You know what? So guess what, Fraser? On the plane right over here, I saw Tar. Very good movie. Could have been better. I don't know. Why don't they have it, take place, have it take place? How about this? Take, take place in a restaurant. Who wants to see a symphony? That's what I say. Listen, you're not going to be able to have a movie called Tar and then not have it not be about street paving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just lifts your no, expectations I... to a different level and it never delivers. Like, I'm not here to watch somebody, you know, tell somebody else how to play a cello. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, where do roads come from? That's my question to Tar. It's like having a, it's like having a movie called Violin and you're watching a highway being built. You gotta like make sure it matches. The title always gotta match. I'm just saying this. I'm not trying to be a nag. I'm just saying this that way your next movie's better. That's all. You're welcome. <laughs> so then um, Dylan is talking about, it's like, look at this. Life is amazing. This is living. This is living. Look at that sunset. This is living. And I just love that he's trying to be so positive, but he's still spouting off uh, slogans from Weight Watchers because that's the old Weight Watchers slogan. This is living. <laughs> and uh, Vanessa Curtin or whatever her name was, Vanessa Redgrave would twirl around <laughs> to go, this is living. And she would drop her coat and twirl around and show her newly trimmed body. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> so I do remember, I remember Vanessa Redgrave was like the big Weight Watchers uh, spokeswoman <laughs> and she was always wearing red. Um, so, so then the guys look at the sun and goes, wow, the sun is so big. Don't fat shame the sunset, sir. One day it'll be thinner than you. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got angry there. High five. High five. Push up. Push up. To push. So the best then part the about captain... the sun is that it burns its own calories. It's so hot. <laughs> Hello there. This is a two-part recap, okay? This is the end of part one. So thank you so much for listening to this. Uh, just come back a little later for part two. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. 
Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Craftin's ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.